What's going on guys, my name is Optic2Bar and welcome to my very first After Effects tutorial. Uh, it's been requested that I start doing tutorials so I thought that I would and I would get started with doing uh, a very basic tutorial which is how to sync clips to the music. So that's what we're going to be covering today and let me show you a quick example of what we're going to be doing. All right, there you go. Um, I've actually included this whole project file as a download in the description. So go ahead and download that if you want, but uh, make sure that you have Windows and you have Adobe After Effects CS6. Otherwise, I don't think it'll work. And don't worry if you don't have all that stuff, just follow along with your own clips and your own song because the, the principles carry over. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna go to Composition, New Composition. And I'm going to call this main composition or main comp. Press OK. So I'm going to bring out my song here. Now this song, uh, just because I'm using it in this video does not mean you have permission to use it in your videos. So uh, just use it. If you're going to download it, just use it for your practice and don't put it in your videos. All right, so to open up the waveforms for the audio, because you can see that this audio file is just a little line, doesn't really help us out here. So to open up the waveform, you press LL really quick on your keyboard with the layer selected. You can also open up the layer here, uh, this little button here, audio waveforms, but it's easier to just press LL. So you can kind of see this part being the intro and the drop being right about here. So I'm going to zoom in on the song by pressing the plus key on my keyboard, or you can also use these mountain buttons here. So you just zoom in. And what we want to do is we want to make markers on the parts that that we want the shots to be at. So to make a marker, you press the star key on your keypad. It has to be on your numeric keypad. So press the star key with the layer selected. Boom. So we, we got a marker here. Now you can see it's not perfectly aligned. So you can just click it and move it over a frame. And now it's perfectly aligned to this little base part right here. If you don't have a numeric keypad, if you're on a laptop or something, you can also drag out a marker from here, from the side here. Um, but it's it's much easier if you have a, a full keyboard. So to listen to the song, to make sure that this is this is the right part, press the period key on your numeric keypad, which is another good reason to have a full keyboard. So if you press that. <laughs> That was indeed the right spot, so we're good to go. Now, if you don't have a numeric keypad, you're going to have to press this button to preview the song. So, uh, But I really recommend getting a full keyboard because um, it really helps out. So from listening to the song, I found that this part was going to be where the next shot I wanted to be. And then if I move over, here's the next part. You can I can tell because of the uh, the waveform here. You can see how it's just like it's kind of anticipating, and then this is a bunch of bass, and I want it to be right on the bass thing for this particular song. Now you don't have to do that, but that's where I'm I'm putting my markers. You can put them wherever you want the gunshots to be. So I'm gonna make about five of these because because that's about how many uh, shots there are on the clip. That's that's five. Okay, so now we want to actually bring out our gunshots first. This is what I like to do. So I'm going to bring out the intervention gunshot. And if you want, you can open up the waveforms for this as well. As you can see, it's it starts on the first frame, so you don't even have to worry about it. Just make sure it's lined up at the start. So you can take that, this the gunshot, hold down shift, and it'll snap right to the markers that we made. Oops. So you can see if I line it up with a marker and play it, it sounds good. Now I'm going to do this for all of my markers. So I can hold down shift here, it'll snap. Now to uh, to duplicate the gunshot, you either uh, select the gunshot, go to edit, duplicate, or you can also just 
click on the layer and press Control D. We can move over our gunshot to this marker, hold down Shift, it'll snap exactly. Control D, go to the next marker, and you can actually press begin bracket, and it'll snap to whatever our current time indicator is at. Press Control D again, go to the next one, hold down Shift, it'll snap. Press begin bracket, which is the button right next to P, if you were wondering. Go to the next marker, hold down Shift, duplicate, press begin bracket. So now we have our five gunshots, and now we have our audio all sorted out. You can see it goes right on the beat. So let me bring out the clip here. Now I'm not going to pre-compose it, but if you know what pre-composing is, then go ahead and do it because I like to do it, but I'm not going to explain it in this video. So now we have to turn this layer, which is our clip, as you can see has five gunshots, it's a five man feed, and Spratty is nice enough to let the community use his clips, so that's one of his clips. So how are we gonna make this, how are we gonna make these gunshots line up with the audio that we've already created? Well, you're gonna have to do something to the clip, and it is called enabling time remapping. Now to do that, right click on the clip, go to time, enable time remapping. What that does is it brings out two of these keyframes. Now what keyframes are is it tells the program you want something to be at a specific time. So if you move these keyframes, it moves what that that value is. Now for this, by default, this is the beginning of the clip and this is the end of the clip. So if I drag the end of the clip to around here, you can see that the clip ends right here and then the rest is just nothing. So if I undo that, the basis of syncing is to create more of these keyframes at each gunshot. So I'm going to go through here and go to each gunshot. You can use these buttons up here to go frame by frame or press page down on your keyboard. You can see the gunshot is on frame here. You can see that the the uh, clip goes down by one, so this is where we want to make a keyframe. Now to make a keyframe, you press this button right here. You can see it creates another little diamond here. So we're not going to worry about lining it up yet, we're just going to go through and make all of our keyframes at the gunshot. Here's another gunshot, nice no scope. Now you can see that's where the frame is, so we're going to make it right there. And keep going. And if your computer is having trouble keeping up, you can turn down the quality for the preview right about here. You can turn it down to half or something, make it go a little bit quicker. So there's the next shot. And one more shot right there. Okay, so now we have our five gunshots in keyframes. So to line up the first one, we, what we can actually do is just move the whole layer until our first keyframe lines up with our first gunshot and marker. So now the second one isn't lined up. So what I have to do is select all of them, including, including all the ones after them, and move over these keyframes until this one lines up with our marker. If you hold down shift, it'll snap nice and easy to our marker. And the reason you have to do this is because you don't want to mess with the end of the clip yet. We only want to mess with this part of the clip. And what it's doing is making this part slow motion to make sure that it lines up with the next gunshot. So if you hold down shift and click on the last keyframe, it'll deselect it. Or you can just deselect all of them and then reselect the other ones. So these two are lined up. We don't want to mess with them. We just want to line up this one. So click and drag, hold down shift. It'll snap to our marker. Hold down shift and deselect that one. Move this one over, hold down shift, deselect it. Move this one over, hold down shift, deselect it. So now you can see all of our five shots are perfectly lined up with our gun gunshots and markers. Now I'm gonna just extend the clip here because it's 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 running out of space. 
And what I'm going to do is actually just make it slow motion here at the end when the feed comes up. So I'm going to make another keyframe, just any place that's this is about a good spot. And then when the feed comes up here, I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to just drag these two apart. And you can see that creates slow motion. I'm also going to make it slow motion before the first gunshot. So I'm going to make a keyframe where I want the slow motion to end, which is right about here. And I want to make a keyframe where the slow motion is going to start. And in this case, I want it to start at the beginning of the clip. So I'm just going to use this keyframe that's already created for us and move this away from each other. And you can see it takes more time for this to turn into that. So that's why it's slow motion. Hopefully uh, this is making sense to you. All right, so now we can preview what we've done. So to do that, you have to uh, set your workspace. And your workspace is defined by these sliders here. But a quick shortcut is if you put your current time indicator where you want the work area to start and press B on your keyboard, it'll snap the beginning. And then press N on your keyboard where you want it to end and it'll end there and now you can press this button or press zero on your numeric keypad to RAM preview what we've done it'll load up the preview here and we'll watch it as soon as it's done alright I'm going to stop it uh, really quickly because I forgot to mention that you have to make sure you turn off the audio from the actual clip. And to do that, you just turn it off right here. And now we can preview it again. Alright, so that's a, a nice simple sync. Um, it's good practice for you guys because Basically every gunshot that in, in my montages and edits have been put there for a reason to sound good to the music. So this is a good technique that you should learn. And if you want to, you can actually go in and make more slow motion. So if I wanted it to be slow motion, let's say right here, I want the slow motion to start. I could set another keyframe, set one a little bit later, maybe right here, set another one. These are the two that we just created. So you can drag the last one forward, or back rather, and it'll be slow motion there. Now I'm going to drag it out a lot to show you what it, what it does. And then this part will be quick to the next shot. So let's see what this looks like. Alright, so it doesn't look great. And something I want to, I have to mention is you can't drag out these too much because we're not using Twixter, so it's not going to, to look smooth if you drag it out too much. But the good thing is that it won't be warpy from Twixter either. So if it's just a simple sync like this, I would recommend using this technique that we just learned. But if it's more complicated and you have to slow down a lot, you may want to use Twixter. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'll probably do a Twixter tutorial later on. But I encourage you to mess around with what you just learned and try to maybe add some more clips or uh, try different spots in the song to sync to. But uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this very first tutorial of mine. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.